continue with part three of our conversation with Laura Pickens as we were discussing helping chakras and unblocking the energies caused by emotional distress. Laura was about to tell us how she developed her own reset button. Basically, like this morning, I don't have a lot of stress going on right now. Well, I do, but it's not like it's not taking me down stress. It's just kind of there. So this morning, um, I will always... I have a hierarchy of the way that I do things. I will always get water when, as soon as I wake up. I will always go for a walk or do some kind of movement. And then I go and do a meditation. And the meditation comes last, like maybe before I go to work or before I come here to do this. Um, and it's a way for me to release any tension. So what I do is just close my eyes. Today I laid in my bed and did this while I was laying down. So you can do it sitting up or you can do it laying down, whatever you want. But I um, imagine closing my eyes and then I imagine like a light. Today I used white, but you can use different colors because different colors have different vibrations and frequencies to help clear different things that you're going through. And so I just draw that light through the crown of my head and have it go in through each of the energy centers. So there's one in between your eyes and there's one in your throat, your heart, your stomach, your second chakra and your first chakra. And I imagine that light going all the way down through me and in my body and touching my organs, touching my bones, touching everything and just kind of clearing everything out. And then just asking, you know, I believe in something greater than me, so I just tap into that and ask that I be um, purified, cleansed, cleared of any stress or tensions that are in there, and just take a couple deep breaths, and that's really all you need to do. It can take five minutes, and it's just kind of like putting pushing that reset button. <laughs> So how do you how do you deal with people who say that's great? You don't have as busy a life as I do. You, I don't have the time. I deal with people who, of all the substances on earth that are abused, Laura, time is the one that we abuse the most. Oh yeah, I would tell you that you have bad boundaries. <laughs> bad, bad boundaries. <laughs> you need to set better boundaries for yourself. You have a problem saying no to other people. And when you get really good at saying no to, first you have to find out what's important to you. But when you're able to figure out what your priorities are, it's very easy to say no to everybody else that's pulling you in different directions. Well, if you're too busy for yourself, you are too busy. Right. <laughs> and quite often when we talked earlier about what's important, at times I'll ask people, well, if everything else was taken away from you, your health, whatever money you had, a home, uh, whatever it was, who'd be standing with you at the end? Who, who would be the people that'd be with you? And those are the individuals, those are the relationships that you want to add to and reinforce. Mm -hmm. There's, as we started off, I kind of made a little joke about like-minded people. However, if we're good at playing golf, we think that we're not going to be happy unless we try to get into a golf league. We believe that even though our personality, our attributes, our inclinations may be to be a good bowler, we think that I can't be happy unless I'm in a golf league because that's where the cool kids are. Mm. That's where that's where I want to be. And generally those perceptions are imposed on us by outside influences. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with the outside influences that can contaminate and toxify people's lives? I didn't used to have that confidence. So I can totally relate when people are being pulled in different directions. But what I will say is everyone is unique. Everyone has their own purpose. <laughs> and your job is to follow that and do whatever makes you happy. So if you're doing stuff just to follow along, but it's not making you happy, then you should just stop. And the idea is, is that how do you help people understand that they are unique? How do you help people understand that that inner critic inside them is telling them that they are not? Yeah, it's a fear. It's a fear. Like I used to have a fear of being all by myself. Like if I did, I don't know, I used to have like those Oracle cards and things like that. Like you think that 
what you're playing with and what you're doing is so fun. And then you introduce it to somebody and they are like, what are you doing? They make you feel like um, you shouldn't be doing that. And then you have to know that that is just fear and that might be not what that person's not into, but you are, but you can build um, a tribe of people that you can connect with. I like that term. Yeah, yeah, it's like a tribe. It's like you don't know in the moment. You just feel like you're separate from this person because they don't like what you're doing. But what you need to understand is that there are, there's probably like 7 billion people on the planet or something. So you can find people that are into doing the same things that you are. You just have to understand that like just because one person doesn't like what you're doing doesn't mean that you need to stop. It's You need to keep going and doing what you love and find the people that love doing it too. So tell me about the number of individuals that you find that have their life stuck and cluttered up with guilt and shame with a, built on a strong foundation of fear. I have a lot of people that are experiencing all those emotions and they feel lost and they feel sad. And that's when you know it's time for a change. So when you talked earlier about a connection with a higher power, could you explain that a little more? Yes, I believe that I am a vessel where this higher power works through me and so I need to connect with it. I do that every day, every morning in order to strengthen that and that we're more spirits in a body than we are bodies with spirits and when you tap into that higher power you're able to feel that connection and feel what makes you happy and strong and then you just do that. And again, this is more of our like-minded thought where we take the perception that we're spiritual beings having a human experience and how many stones or how many shiny items are we holding on inside that cage that don't allow us to fully participate in our, in our lives. And the higher power aspect is where the mindfulness aspect comes in that we try to incorporate. It's, we often talk about people being time travelers. Frequent flyer miles to the past and the present, brief layovers in the present. And if we're present and aware, this is when the creator, the divine, whatever, puts people, places, things, circumstances, events in your life. And if you're there to witness them, they'll have some meaning for you. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you've had those experiences in your life, and it sounds like you have them every day. That is true. <laughs> cool. So could you tell us a little bit about some of your trainings and some of the activity seminars that you've participated in? Yes. Um, I was just with Mastin Kip in Hawaii. He is a author and a world speaker. He goes all over the world and speaks about claiming your power and owning your power. And I was just with him in Hawaii in April. So that was my last one, but I love going to Dr. Joe Dispenza's workshops. He really touches on your thoughts and your emotions and how they're all connected and how you can change them if you're not experiencing the life that you want to. And I love working with Donna Eden with energy medicine and anything that has to do with being happy, <laughs> being free. So sometimes people take the perspective that being happy and being free is arrogance and it's selfishness and it's self-centeredness. How do you counter that? It's actually the opposite. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. So how do you so how do you counter people that take the belief that doing these type of things, being your own gardener, the the water, the environment, the sunlight all those things are selfishness and self-centeredness. How do you counter that to a person when they tell you that? And I'm sure you've heard it. I have heard it, but I don't try to counter it. I mm -hmm. just accept their opinions, and they are where they're at, mm -hmm. and they're probably where they need to be. And I don't try to force anyone to think the way that I think. People can't really persuade me into thinking something different than I already do because what I do works for me. So I don't. Um, I don't counter it. <laughs> so what we can do is we share, we model behavior. We share with people what works in our life. Right. And we try to present possibilities to them uh, rather than live their life of a certainty. 
yeah, I let people know like what I do and what works for me. And if they're struggling, then they can ask for help and come to me. But I don't force anyone to do anything. Oh, sure. So tell us how a person would contact you, Laura. I'm working on a microsite right now that is going to be done here by the end, I think next week. It's called acceptandtransform.com. And I'm also building a website that's not up yet, but you can always email me at ljpickens55 at gmail.com. Okay, ljpickens, P-I-C-K-E-N-S, 55 mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Well, Laura, you're delightful. Thank you. So and, are you. And it's certainly uh, been enlightening to spend <laughs> this time with, with you today. And for those of you who are listeners to this program, we often give a pre-prescription at the end of every podcast, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask that you fish without bait. I challenge you to do a kindness for yourself and do a kindness for another today. Put a smile on someone's face. Namaste. Please check out our website at fishingwithoutbait.com, where you can listen to the show, comment on our discussions, and find out where you can subscribe to our podcast. If you're interested in flying the colors of Fishing Without Bait, click the shop icon on our website. We have clothing, mugs, cell phone cases, and so much more. Show the world that you fish without bait. Fishing Without Bait is a production of Namaste Holistic Counseling, PC.